In this video, we're going to focus on solving linear equations. So let's begin with this example. x plus 4 is equal to 7. How can we solve this linear equation? The goal here is to calculate the value of x. Now you might be wondering, what is x? x is a variable. It has a value that we currently don't know. And x is just basically a number. We just got to find out the value of that number. So now let's think about this equation intuitively. What number plus 4 is equal to 7? If you think about it, we know that 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. So in this equation, x has a value of 3. But now let's talk about a step-by-step -step process that will help us to get this answer. In this equation, x is added to 4, and that equals 7. In order to solve the equation, what you want to do is you want to get the x variable by itself on one side of the equation. The only way to do that is to get rid of the 4. So what you need to do is perform the opposite operation of what you see here. The opposite of addition is subtraction. So we need to subtract both sides by 4. Whatever you do to the left side, you must also do to the right side. Positive 4 plus negative 4 adds up to 0, so they cancel. Now we're going to bring down the x, and here we have 7 minus 4. 7 minus 4 is 3. So we get x is equal to 3, as we see here. So that's how we could solve that particular linear equation. Now for the sake of practice, Go ahead and try these two problems. x plus 9 is equal to 15. And also, 6 plus x is equal to 13. Feel free to pause the video and work on those two examples. Now let's think about this intuitively. What number plus 9 is equal to 15? We know that 6 plus 9 is 15. So therefore, x has to equal 6. Now to show your work, what you could do is perform the opposite operation of addition. So we see plus 9. Let's subtract both sides by 9. These two will cancel. We could bring down the x. And so we'll get x is equal to 15 minus 9. 15 minus 9 is 6. And for those of you who may not be sure of that, what you could do is you could use a number line. Let's say if you have 15 here. If you want to subtract it by 9, simply travel 9 units to the left. So this is 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So when you're subtracting, move to the left using a number line. When you're adding, just move to the right. So that's how you can do 15 minus 9. Now let's work on the next one. So here we have 6 plus x is 13. 6 plus what number adds up to 13? We know that 6 plus 7 is 13. So therefore, x is going to be this number, 7. Now let's show our work. What we need to do in this example is the opposite of plus 6. We need to subtract both sides by 6. So these will cancel. We can bring down the x. And here we have 13 minus 6, which is 7. So we get x is equal to 7. So that's how we could solve these one-step linear equation problems. What about these two problems? x minus 3 is equal to 9, and n minus 8 is equal to 7. Feel free to pause the video and go ahead and calculate the value of x and the value of the variable n. So here we see that x is subtracted by 3. To get x by itself, we need to perform the opposite operation of subtraction. The opposite of subtraction is addition. So we need to add 
3 to both sides. Negative 3 and positive 3 will cancel. So we could bring down the x variable. We'll get x is equal to 9 plus 3. So the answer is x is equal to 12. And you could check it. If you plug in 12 back to the original expression, you'll get 12 minus 3 is equal to 9. And 12 minus 3 is 9. So the left side is equal to the right side. That's how you know if you have the right answer. For the next one, we could do the same thing. And this time, we're going to add 8 to both sides. So we're going to have n is equal to 7 plus 8. And 7 plus 8 is 15. So that's it for those two examples. Try these two. Let's say we have 6.3 is equal to negative 2 plus y. And then 5 is equal to a minus 8. Go ahead and calculate the value of y and the value of the variable a. So this time, y, or the variable, is on the right side of the equation, not the left side. So we want to get rid of this negative 2. So there's a negative sign in front of the 2. Therefore, we need to perform the opposite operation. So we're going to add 2 to both sides. So that negative 2 and positive 2 will cancel. When you add them up, you get 0. Now let's bring down the y variable. Here we have 6.3 plus 2. So 2 is the same as 2.0. So now if you add them, 6 plus 2 is 8. 0.3 plus 0.0, or just 0 plus 3 is 3. So we get y is equal to 8.3. For the next one, we're going to add 8 to both sides. Bringing down the a, we're going to have a is equal to 5 plus 8, which is 13. So that's how we can solve those two linear equations. Now, I want to show you a technique that you could use when solving linear equations. This technique might be useful in some cases. So let's go back to this equation. We're going to solve it two ways. So the way that you're familiar with is add in 7, since we have a negative 7 here. If we add 7 to both sides, we can quickly get the answer. So this is going to be x is equal to 4 plus 7, which is 11. Another way in which you can get that same answer, instead of adding 7 to both sides, what you can simply do is move the negative 7 from the left side to the right side. When you move a number or a variable from one side to the other, the sign in front of it changes. So we have a negative sign in front of 7. When, it, when we move the 7 to the other side, it's going to be positive 7. It's a negative on the left, but it's going to be positive on the right. So let's move this to the other side. So what we're going to have is x is equal to 4, not minus 7, but plus 7. So it changed from negative 7 to positive 7 as we move it to the right side. And then 4 plus 7 is 11. So that's another way in which you can solve this equation. Let's try that with this equation. Let's do it both ways. So first, we can subtract both sides by 4, which is completely fine. If we do that, we'll get r is equal to 9 minus 4, which is 5. Or we could simply move the 4 to the other side. It's positive 4 on the left, but it's going to be negative 4 on the right. And then it's 9 minus 4, which will still give us the same answer. Now go ahead and try these two problems. So 5 minus x is equal to 12. What do you recommend that we should do to solve that equation? Would you add x to both sides, subtract both sides by 5? What would you do? For this problem, I recommend doing this. Let's take a negative x, move it 
and let's move it to the other side. And then let's take positive 12 and let's move it to this side. So let's focus on the 12. 12 is positive on the right, but it's going to be negative on the left. X is negative on the left side, but it's going to be positive on the right. Positive X is the same as just X. So now we can see that X is simply 5 minus 12. 5 minus 12 is negative 7. So this is the answer. I'm just going to rewrite that answer here because I'm going to show you the old-fashioned way of solving that equation. So here's what we could have done to solve this problem. What we could do is we can add x to both sides. But I believe this is going to be the longer way. So we'll get 5 is equal to 12 plus x. So we have positive x now instead of negative x. And then we can subtract both sides by 12. So these will cancel. On the right side, we have x by itself. On the left, we have 5 minus 12, which is negative 7. So you could have done it that way too. Both ways will work. Go ahead and solve this one. And let's use both techniques. So feel free to pause the video and try it. So what I'm going to do to get rid of some of the negative signs is I'm going to move negative 8 to the right side, and then I'm going to move negative r to the left. So negative r, as I move it to the left, is going to change to positive r. The 5 is going to remain where it is. The negative 8, it's negative on the left side. But when I move it to the right side, it's going to be positive 8. So whenever you move a number or a variable, from one side to another, it simply flips sign. If it was negative, it becomes positive. If it was positive, it becomes negative. So now I have r is equal to 5 plus 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. So that's one way in which you could do it. The other way is doing it one step at a time. So first, let's add r to both sides. Negative r plus r cancels. Here we have negative 8 plus r. They're not like terms, so we can't combine them. We simply just have to rewrite them as negative 8 plus r. Now we need to get r by itself. So we need to add 8 to both sides. These two will cancel. We could bring down the r. And then we have 5 plus 8, which is 13. So in both cases, you can get the same answer. You just have to pick which method uh, you prefer to work with. So that's how we could solve that particular equation. Now, let's say we have 3x is equal to 12. How can we calculate the value of x? So let's think about this intuitively. 3 times what number is equal to 12? When you see a number in a variable attached like that, the connection between them is multiplication. 3 times what number is 12? We know that 3 times 4 is 12. Therefore, x is equal to 4 in this example. But now, how do we show our work to get this answer? In order to get x by itself, we need to separate the x from the 3. In order to separate it, we need to perform the opposite operation of what we see here. The x is multiplied by 3. And what, op what operation is opposite to multiplication? We know that to be division. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the division property of equality to get x by itself. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. 3x divided by 3 is 1x. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So they cancel. 1x is the same as x. If you were to see a z, this is the same as 1z. If you were to see a y, that's the same as 1 times y. 1 times anything is itself. When you see this fraction, it basically means division. 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And so we get our answer, x is equal to 4. Go ahead and try this example. Let's say 7x is equal to 14. What is the value of x? So once again, we're going to use the division property of equality. 
we're going to divide both sides by 7 to separate the 7 from the x. The 7s will cancel, and we're going to get x. 14 divided by 7 is 2. So the answer, x is equal to 2. Try these two. Negative 6y is equal to negative 30, and negative 8n is equal to 48. So go ahead and solve for the variables y and n. So for this one, all we need to do is divide both sides by negative 6. So we can get y by itself. Negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1. So we just get y. Negative 30 divided by negative 6, the two negative signs will cancel. So that's the same as positive 30 divided by 6. And that's 5. 30 divided by 6 is 5. And 5 times 6 is 30. So when you're thinking about what this answer is, if you're asking yourself, what is 30 divided by 6? You can think of it this way. What is 6 times what number is 30? And if you know your multiplication tables, it's 6 times 5. 6 times 5 is 30. So for the next one, what we need to do is divide both sides by negative n. Negative 8 divided by negative 8 is 1. So we just get n. And here we're dividing 48 by negative 8. Whenever you divide a positive number by a negative number, you're going to get a negative result. So let's focus on 48 divided by 8. What is 48 divided by 8? So think of it in the other way. 8 times what number is 48? So using your multiplication tables, hopefully you have that memorized. 8 times 6 is 48. Therefore, 48 divided by 8 is 6. So this is going to be negative 6. Positive 48 divided by negative 8 is negative 6. And you can confirm that with your calculator. Try these two. Let's say we have 7x is equal to negative 56 and negative 8y is equal to negative 72. Go ahead and try those two problems. So for the first one, we need to divide both sides by 7. The 7s will cancel on the left, giving us x. And then what is negative 56 divided by positive 7? We know the answer is going to be negative. A negative number divided by a positive number will give us a negative result. So let's think, of the, let's think of it this way. What is 56 divided by 7? Or 7 times what number is 56? Using your multiplication tables, you'll see that 7 times 8 is 56. So 56 divided by 7 is 8. Therefore, negative 56 divided by positive 7 must be negative 8. Now moving on to the next example. We need to use the division property of equality. We need to divide both sides by negative 8. Negative 8 will cancel on the left. And so here we have y is equal to negative 72 divided by negative 8. When you divide two negative numbers, you're going to get a positive result. So this is the same as dividing positive 72 by positive 8. So what is 72 divided by 8? What is that equal to? Or 8 times what number is 72? 8 times 9 is 72. Therefore, 72 divided by 8 is 9. So that's going to be the answer for this example. y is equal to positive 9.